In today's video, we're going to look at why falling objects reach a terminal velocity, which is where their velocity remains constant. So they're no longer accelerating or decelerating. Now, because this topic can be a bit confusing, we're going to run through everything in detail. And then at the end of the video, we're just going to quickly recap it all and summarize the whole thing. Let's start by imagining the moment when somebody steps out of an aeroplane. So that split second when they're stationary in the air. What do you think is going to happen to them? Well, because the person has mass, gravity will be pulling them downwards towards the Earth, which they'll feel as a force we call weight. And because the person's mass doesn't change, the magnitude of their weight will always be the same. So this weight arrow is going to stay the same size through the whole video. Now, in this instant that they first step out of the plane, the weight will be the only force that's acting on them. And so the resultant force, which remember is the combination of all the forces acting on an object, will be the same size and direction as the weight, because there aren't any other forces. And so this resultant force will cause them to accelerate downwards. As soon as the person starts falling though, they'll encounter air resistance, which will be an upwards force that acts in opposition to the weight. The air resistance, which is sometimes called drag, is due to the collisions between the person and all the tiny air particles that make up the air. So effectively, as the person falls and bangs into all these tiny air particles, they act to slow the person down. And the size of the air resistance will depend on how many of these collisions there are. Now, this number is going to depend on two main things. The surface area of the person, because the higher the surface area, the larger the area over which the collisions can take place, and the velocity with which the person's moving, because the faster they're moving, the more particles they'll collide with. At the moment, because this person's only just started falling, they won't have accelerated very much, and so their velocity will still be quite low, meaning they're not falling very fast. This means that the force of air resistance acting on them will also be low which we can show with this small grey arrow that points upwards. Now, the most important thing in this video is to remember that the resultant force acting on the person is just the sum of the weight and the air resistance, which we're showing here by adding together the red weight arrow and the grey air resistance arrow. Because they're acting in opposite directions, the air resistance effectively cancels out some of that weight. And so the resultant force will now be a bit smaller. Notice that the resultant force is still acting in the downwards direction though. So the person will continue to accelerate downwards. As the person's velocity increases though, the force from the air resistance will increase as well. Because remember, they'll be colliding with more particles which increases the air resistance. And because their weight is constant, this means that the resultant force will decrease by the same amount as the air resistance has increased. So although they continue to accelerate downwards, the rate of acceleration will fall. We can see all of this if we plot it on a velocity time graph, with their velocity on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. As time goes on, and they fall faster and faster, their air resistance will be increasing, and so the graph starts to get less steep, because the rate of acceleration is decreasing. At some point though, the velocity will get so high, and there'll be so many collisions between the particles and the person, that the air resistance will increase to the same size as the weight. This means that the two opposing forces, so the weight and the air resistance, will now balance each other out, which means that there'll be zero resultant force 
and so the person will stop accelerating. This means that their velocity won't change anymore. And if it's not changing, this is what we call their terminal velocity. Now, if the person decided to open up their parachute, then their surface area would suddenly increase massively, and so the air resistance would increase as well. This means that the resultant force would now be upwards, meaning that the person would accelerate upwards, or effectively decelerate in the downwards direction, and so slow down and fall more slowly. The more they slow down though, the lower the air resistance will be, and so the resultant force upwards will get smaller and smaller, until eventually the air resistance will become equal to the weight again, at which point the resultant force will be zero, and so the person will reach a new terminal velocity. This new terminal velocity will actually be lower than the last one, because remember the person slowed down. So the new terminal velocity, with the parachute in place, will be lower than the terminal velocity without the parachute. Now, before we finish, let's just very quickly recap everything that we've covered so far. When an object first starts falling, its weight downwards is much larger than any air resistance upwards. And so there's a resultant force in the downwards direction causing it to accelerate towards the ground. As the object accelerates though, and its velocity increases, the air resistance will also increase, until at some point, the air resistance will equal the weight, meaning that the resultant force will fall to zero. As there's no resultant force acting on the object anymore, there can't be any acceleration. And so at this point, we say that the object has reached its terminal velocity, because it will stay at this velocity until there's some sudden change, like the opening of a parachute. That's everything for this video. So if you enjoyed it, then please do give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.